Hi everybody. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on importing animated objects into a Sentinel engine because I personally had a very tough time with this uh, over the last couple days. So I think that it would benefit the whole community to have a really quick basic tutorial on how to get Im uh, animated items into the Sentinel engine. Uh, and what I was trying to do is take this light, uh, this windmill that comes with the Sentinel engine and make it spin. It seemed really straightforward, but it ended up uh, taking a lot of research for me to figure out. Uh, in the end, I did, and I want to show you how I did that so that you can hopefully um, import animated objects into your Central Engine as well. So uh, the first step is I need to get this model uh, in a standard format that I could load into Blender because the Central one doesn't work. Um, I found it on Turbo Squid um, just by going to uh, Windmill. Uh, I'll include a link in the description, but essentially you want to download the object file from uh, TurboSquid and import it in the Blender. Uh, so when you open up Blender, you get this default area. You may have a cube here. Just delete the cube and the uh, the camera uh, and go to File and you want to import object here. I mean, no object. So when you load in, it's going to be huge. So uh, you just want to go and press S and scale that way down uh, a couple times maybe just to get it so it's in the scene. Thanks. Okay, so that's big. Um, also, you need to drag this light source. Blend is kind of annoying that way, making you move lights around, uh, do all that stuff. Um, Texture, so good enough. All right, so you go to texture mode now. I can see my uh, my uh, windmill. Now, the first thing you have to do, and this is really really important, is in object mode, go ahead and hit this origin button and say jump to origin. I don't know why you have to do it, but you do for the FPX export we can do later. So please do that first. Um, also, whenever you get a chance, again, I don't know what it does. Uh, press the A key. Uh, sorry, Control A and apply uh, rotation, apply scale, apply location, just apply them in the beginning. It helps. Again, I don't know why. Blender is very fickle with the FBX exporter. So make sure you do that first to set this up. Okay, so now that I have my windmill mesh in the Blender, uh, what I want to do is add a bone that we, we can animate. So by pressing uh, Shift A, you get this menu and you want to add armature single bone. Uh, and it will be wherever you have the 3D pointer, uh, it's up there, it looks like. Uh, it's probably a better way to do it. I just go here to object and put it at 0, 0, 0, and then rotate it by 90 degrees. So then it's right in the middle. Uh, and then I can go to my moving tool and move it up to the uh, windmill area. So it's not, it doesn't need to be that precise. Uh, I just want to put it generally right there. That works for me. Um, and now what you want to do is uh, right click on the object and then shift right click on the on the bone and then press control P uh, and select this option view, uh, with automatic weights and it will set the bone and the object as, uh, as parents. Um, you'll get this message again I don't really know why um, you can just ignore it in this case. Uh, it's probably because I haven't set my, my meshes up yet or my um, weight painting up yet, but you don't have to do that anymore with the new Blender version. So what it's going to do essentially is apply that bone to the entire object, which is not what we want it to do. We want it to just be this windmill piece. So if you go to the side view uh, of this, also if you go to the object first, you'll see that we'll now have a new vertice called bone that was created. Uh, I'm just going to rename it, and this is linked to the actual bone itself. So if you rename the bone uh, here to blades, now when I go to my object, I'll have that vertice group will now be called blades. Uh, and if I press tab to go to edit mode, you'll see basically um, by default nothing selected. So that's why it failed. Uh, so let's go ahead and tell which vertices we actually care about. So uh, if I press, I'm in edit mode now, uh, and I'm in vertex selection mode. I'm going to go ahead and press B to get my area selector and just try to select all of these vertices. Uh, without getting the wireframe mode, let's try again. All of these vertices without getting the um, the house or in, in in it. 
All right. Uh, I also want to get these four point or five points right in here. So zoom in. Uh, I usually just press apply, assign really quickly just to save my work just in case. Uh, and then I'm gonna hold shift and right click these points here. Cool. That looks like all the vertices have been selected. Uh, press assign again. So now I've assigned all these vertices to the blades group, which is attached to the bone. Uh, now I press tab to escape out of edit mode. Now the way I check this normally is by going into object weight paint and you can see it's red which is exactly what you want. That means that the bone is applied fully to the windmill which is what we want or the blades. So I can go back to object mode uh, and now I should be able to select my bone here uh, and I want to go into pose mode which should allow me to pre when you're in po pose mode it should rotate cleanly which you can see it does. So now we are ready to add our animation, which should be pretty quick, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I start from zero and go to 120 generally. I start from zero. You can do whatever you want. That's just how I like it. Uh, in this key area, we want to lock on rotation, so we only are recording our rotation changes. Um, what you're also going to do is go into this, uh, when you have this bone selected, go to this bone object. Uh, and change this from rotation mode to uh, axis angle. I find it works better for me. Uh, and start at zero. So this will be our, our starting point for our rotation. Once you're here, pressing the I key will add the, the keyframes. You can see there are four keyframes added, which is what we want. Uh, and that will be our spot zero. So now we move over to spot 60. And uh, we want to rotate this in this direction, which is positive. Uh, you can see that's where the blades work. If I look at uh, my texture. Actually, I actually want to go this way, don't I? Negative. Um, so, when we're going to start off is you put pi in here to do a one rotation. Uh, it does 3.14 for us. And press i again to add the next keyframe. And then you can go and press 2 pi also. And then you get 2. Uh, also press i again. Oh, sorry. I forgot to adjust my spot. Sorry about that. So back to pi, i. And now I need to move to the last frame, 120 and then go to pi. And don't forget to press i again. So now I have three keyframes at 0, 60, and 120, and that should start the blades turning for us. Uh, yeah, that looks good. I actually don't like them going backwards like that, uh, so I'm going to change these to negative. So uh, I go to negative pi and negative 2 pi. Oh, I need to press I again. Uh, let's see what this Always press I after you finish making your changes to see your keyframes over. So now it should be going the right direction. Now you can see it's going the way I like it. Uh, you also feel it slows down though, which I don't like either because it should be going at a constant speed. We can fix that. Uh, if we go change this to our graph editor, go to the key menu, and go to interpolation mode and I want to put linear interpolation. Now you can see the line is nice and straight. Back to my 3D view and I press play now. There we go. That's what I want to see. It's just the blades rotating at a constant speed. Uh, it's a little jumpy because of my cam studio running, but that looks pretty good. So now we're ready to take this model and this animation and import them into Sentinel.